Well, hey folks, this is John with you. We're here in the Ozarks Backroads World Headquarters garage today. Uh, we're not out in the government woods because, uh, well... So today we're going to be doing a little maintenance on the Mighty Tiger, our 2019 uh, 800 Tiger here. We're going to be doing the valve clearance check. Uh, also the cam timing check you can adjust the cam timing on these uh, on the 2019 and up uh, 800 and 900 uh, you can actually adjust the cam timing if your uh, timing chain gets stretched which it will i invite you to stick around we'll do a little work here on the mighty 2019 tiger 800. so here we are we've got our tank off of the bike and if you need to know uh, how to do that i'll put a link in the description below the video here, I've got some videos I'll link that show uh, taking the fairings off and the tank and everything if you need to know how to do that. But I don't want to make the same, uh, the same videos over and over. So uh, I'll just put a link to those. We're going to move on from here. We've all we've done is removed our fairings and our tank. Now, as always, the very first thing I've done before I did anything was remove the... Uh, one of the battery cables off of the battery over here. Uh, I don't want to take a chance on damaging the computer or any sensors or anything. So always do that first. Looks like we've got a uh, air charge sensor here on the on the top of the uh, breather lid. Just push in the little clip and release that and we'll get all these screws out. I got the top of the breather lid off and then we've got these uh, air horns sit on top of each of the throttle body, the inlets here. I've loosened those, the bolts off of those, so each one of those will just lift out of, lift out of place. And that's what holds the air box down to the throttle bodies, the inlets there on the throttle bodies. We do have a sensor that sits right here with a little hose on the bottom of it that plugs onto a nipple. We need to unhook that and then unplug the, uh, the uh, connector off of that. It's going to come off with the air box. And then the only other thing I believe holding this on is this number, this eight millimeter headed uh, bolt right here runs through the bottom of the breather housing. Yep. There's a nipple right here on the back, it, back of it that goes, this is the crankcase ventilation right here on top of the transmission this hose plugs into this nipple right here but it slipped out nice and easy it doesn't need to be tied or anything so we'll set this aside we've got a uh, hose here that runs to this uh, valve this air recirculation valve that goes in the top of the uh, valve cover here this will just take off and just get it out of the way. All the hose and everything here where it plugs onto these nipples. Get them broke loose where they'll pull off. There it is. Uh, it's like we got a sensor here or a plug here on this valve. We'll have to take that off. Just pinch it down and... Well, we've got this, uh, this hose off that was on these two nipples here on the top of the valve cover. Got it off and out of the way. The next thing we've got to do here is get this intake out of the way. This servo motor for the throttle uh, shaft here is hanging right over the uh, valve cover. So we can't get the valve cover off with this on here. And this is all integrated into, the, uh, into this throttle body assembly where these three throttle bodies are at. We've got a uh, plug right here for the servo motor. It's got to push down on the little tab and pull it off. There's a throttle position sensor over here on the end. And the same thing, there's a plug on it with a little tab you push, pull that off. And then we've got three fuel injector connections under here, under this fuel rail. They plug onto the injectors. The tabs are on the bottom, you push up and then pull them off. There are uh, three clamps that clamp the bottom of each, uh, uh, the bottom below the throttle bodies 
onto the horn that goes into the uh, cylinder head. So we have to unscrew all three of those and then this will just pull off. I got me a, a bit that fits these. I'm on the middle one right here, right underneath the fuel injector. Get these clamps loosened up. And this one I've gotten loose. It was probably the easiest one to get to. You can just get to it right here from the side. The one on the left side, they've got it turned where it's pretty easy to get to as well. Right here. So that's luck. Well, not really. Somebody had to put it on, so that's how they did it. There it is. I think I will just leave this sitting here. First thing I want to do is plug those up. I don't want anything getting down in my cylinders here. That would be most not good. So now we need to get the uh, fuel injector connectors for each fuel injector unplugged. I got a little tab you push down on them. Pull them off. We've got two right here that we need to unplug so we can get this wiring back out of the way. Just a little tab we push down on and uh, there. So now we can get all that wiring out of the way. We'll get these uh, coils off of these plugs, these spark plug coils. You just kind of twist them around and pull up on them at the same time. And they'll come up out of there. They should come right on up out of there the little patients. Next thing to do will be to go ahead and pull our plugs out. And uh, before I do that, I'm going to take my air hose and just to make sure I haven't gotten anything down in there, blow that out. I don't want to pull a plug and have some dirt or something in there and fall down in the cylinder. Got my uh, plug pulling set up here, my socket. I put a little tape in the end of it there, just kind of wrap it in so it'll get a good bite onto the uh, plug and it won't let it go. It'll pull it out of there and then I take my socket on just in case it tries to pull off. I don't want to lose it down in there either. So I'll have to push that on a little bit because of the tape. That's all right. Those shouldn't be just super tight, and they weren't. We'll get the rest of them out, and then I think we're going to be able to get this cover off, perhaps. So we got six bolts here, six big large cap screws on top of the valve covers, two on either end of it, and then a pair right in the middle on either side. And they're Allen, uh, Allen keys. So we'll get all of these out. They're not bad to get to. I've been able to get them all loose. And then you can just bring them out with your fingers. So I got my crash bar off on this right side. It was kind of blocking the exit here for this cover on the end. It's just three bolts that come right off. It wasn't no big deal at all. This can warm right out the end here on the right side and come out. Okay, we're over here on the right side of the bike now. We've got our uh, valve cover off. I need to remove the uh, timing, the crank cover here, the timing chain uh, access cover to the end of the crank here on the right side. These are just eight millimeter headed uh, cap screws. We'll get this off and then we can uh, turn our crank. Perhaps we can persuade this a little bit. Yep. So now we can get a uh, socket right here on the end of the crankshaft and we can turn our motor and uh, we're going to want to turn the motor clockwise the, the normal way that it rotates is forwards so I can turn this and, and run my cam lobes away from the valves and do all my valve checks and we'll do that next.
Well, we've got our, our crank exposed down there where we got a socket on it. We can turn the crank. Uh, spark plugs are out so the motor will spin over for us. We got our, uh, this is our intake side next to the intake ports here. This is our intake camshaft here. We've got two valves per cylinder. There's two right here, two right here, and two right here that one on either side of this, uh, this boss here for the cam, uh, the upper cam housing. So there's one here and one here. So we got two for each cylinder. So what we need to do is just make sure that our cam lobes, you can see the lobes pointing straight up on this cam, on these two right here on the middle cylinder. We want to make sure those are pointing away from the valve, which is below the camshaft, the valve stem sticking up below here. So these two are pointing away from the, the valve stem right now. So the base circle of the cam is above the uh, valve stems. So I'm going to go ahead and check that pair while it's sitting there. And on the intake, our spec is four thousandths to uh, eight thousandths. The main thing is we don't want any tight. We, want to be, we don't want them to be below four. So I'm going to go with four. That's my minimum and make sure I can slip that in between the valve stem and the cam lobe and it slides right in. Same over here. This one I can feel is a little tighter. Now we'll go up to uh, five thousandths. Okay, five goes in there, but I'm getting a little drag. That's probably just a snudge over five thousandths right there. And this guy, five goes in, but it, uh, it definitely has some drag on it. So this is about five. That's probably about 5.1 or two thousandths. This one's just a little looser. So I'll go ahead and record those. So these are coming up. I'll go ahead and roll this uh, crankshaft around just a little bit. And there they go. They're pointing straight up right there. So we'll do the same thing here. Make sure our four will go. That just went right in. So did that one. Try the five. Five goes in, but I'm getting a little drag on that one. Five goes in there. We'll try a six here. Six won't go in on that one. And just, I'm getting pretty good drag on six. This is about a six. This is probably around a five and a half or a 5.3 or something. The six will not go. And the five goes in pretty easy. I'm gonna call that a 5.3 and a, a six. This other one here, you can see these two cam lobes are, well, you may not see them from this angle, but they're starting to come up. I'll go ahead and roll those up. And there they go, they're pointing straight up. See if our four goes in here. Nice and easy. Check this one nice and easy on that one too. Here goes the five. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Try the six. Okay, the six won't go there or there. So it's somewhere between five and six. And my five, not much drag. I'm gonna say they're probably like five point Somewhere between five and a half and, and six. We'll call them 5.7. But the six will not go. So we got plenty of clearance there. Okay, we've got our uh, intake valves checked and they all look good. Uh, the spec on these was four to six thousandths, which is 0.1 to 0.15 millimeters. All of these fell within that range. Now we need to go back here and do our exhaust camshaft. The center cylinder right here, number two, both of my cam lobes are sticking straight up. I know you can't see them from the angle, but I can't get a, uh, a camera shot in there. But uh, they're sticking straight up. And the spec on the exhaust is uh, six to eight thousandths of an inch, which is uh, 0.15 to 0.2 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and make sure that our six 
will go in underneath these two cam lobes that are pointing up right here. I'll just have to reach in from the back side here and uh, that six went in. No problem at all on that one. Check it over here on this one. I'm kind of having to play by feel here. I can't see any better than you can. Okay, the six just fell in that one too. So we'll go to our seven here. Okay, the seven's going in, but got just a little drag on that one. Same on this one. Just a little drag on the seven. So both of those have a slight drag on the seven. So they're going to be pretty close to seven. I'll try this eight, but I don't think there's any chance of it going in here. No. And it won't go in this one either. So I'm going to call those about seven. I was getting a little drag on seven on both of those. So I'll just say those are those two right there are seven. I'll go ahead and check the two outer ones here, just like I've been doing uh, on one and three. And then we'll look at our results. Okay, I've got all of my uh, valves checked now and uh, everything looks good. Uh, everything falls within spec. My, in, uh, my exhaust valves up here are supposed to be six to eight thousandths. And my widest one was right at eight. And my narrowest one was over here at six and a half thousandths. My intakes uh, were four to six thousandths on the spec. And we're looking at uh, mostly around five. There's a one that's right at five. The, the thinnest one was uh, four and a half thousandths. The rest of them are five, five and a half. So we're in good shape here on the valves. The next thing we need to do is go take a look. We can actually uh, check the cam timing to see if our cam uh, chain has stretched and if our cam shafts have fallen back in time a little bit to the crank. We're over here on the right side and uh, we're going to check our cam timing to make sure our cam shafts are, uh, are up uh, in time with the crank. We make sure we don't have too much stretch in our timing chain. Uh, and the way we do that, we lock the crank shaft here. There's a locking mechanism. If you look right in this, there's a hole right here in the block, in the crankcase right here. Well, there's a gear behind this that drives the uh, clutch, uh, a gear back behind here that runs the clutch, that drives the big gear on the clutch, uh, behind the clutch drum there. That gear's got a, the same size hole in it as this. And when they line up, that means that number one is on top dead center. That's how you uh, align the crank on top dead center. So I'm going to do that now. I'm just about rolled up to it. I'm using a uh, six millimeter pin here. I've got a, a Torx driver with a six millimeter shaft on it and it's the correct diameter for this. Same as the tool. If you ordered the tool from Triumph, it's just a piece of six millimeter stock. Same thing. So I'm going to put this in the hole and push it up against the gear. And then when I run the gear down here into, when I run the crank into the top dead center, it'll drop into that gear. And that will tell me when the crank is at top dead center. We'll have it locked in. And there it went. <clears throat> so we are locked into uh, to top dead center there. We've got the, the crank shaft. I can't turn the crank anymore. It's with this tool in there, it's locked the, the, the crank to the case here with this pin. Now that we've got our crankshaft at top dead center right here, we can go around to the camshafts on the other end and uh, there's a way to tell if they're in time or not. And we'll go take a look at that right now. Here we're looking at the, uh, the other end of the camshafts on the left side of the bike. Here and here, these are the exhaust lobe for the first exhaust valve and the intake lobe here for the first intake valve. And if you look at the end of these shafts, you'll see there's a slot cut in them. There's a slot cut in the end of these two cam shafts. When our crank shaft is up on number one, top dead center, like we've got it uh, uh, staked in there now, these two slots will be perfectly aligned with each other. If the cams, uh, cam shafts are in time with the crank, the slots in these are exactly seven millimeters. 
So the tool you use needs to be seven millimeters. If you're using a, a plate of steel, a steel plate, seven mil thick will fit in these. I'm using a rod, a seven millimeter stainless stock rod right here. We can see this. I just cut it out of some seven millimeter stock. It just does fit in to those slots on the cam. And you can see it there. So I've got my crankshaft. We're locked in at top dead center. I'm going to take this seven mil rod and if I can snap that in here into these two camshafts, then I know that my camshafts are up in time with my crank. They're not, the cam shaft chain hasn't stretched so much that uh, these have fallen back in time. It takes a little bit of effort to snap those in, but I've got them in there. They're all the way in. So my camshafts are, are at top dead center and my crankshaft is at top dead center. So I know that uh, I haven't stretched my uh, timing chain so much that my cams have uh, fallen behind in timing yet. And I think we've got about uh, 14 or 15,000 miles on this bike. So, uh, you know, we'll check it at 40. 35 or 40 and see how they're looking. But right now, I think we're in pretty good shape. Looking at the timing gears here on the other end of the camshafts where our timing chain comes up off the crank and around here. If you notice the, uh, where the bolts are here that hold these gears to the camshaft, there's two bolts on each one. They're, they're, they're in big old slots here. You can, I can loosen these two bolts up and move the timing gear on the, uh, on the camshaft. I can move it forward or backwards, whichever way I need to go. So if my timing was a little slow, let's say that these, normally what happens, your chain will get a little stretch in it. The cams will be a little bit too far this away when the crank is straight up on top dead center like we have it now. I could loosen these bolts and turn my cams and uh, uh, turn, uh, advance my cams up to where they should be, to where they lock on the back side there, and then tighten the bolts back up and I could adjust my cam timing like that. We're in good shape on this one. I'm not gonna mess with it. It's, it's nearly perfect. You know, it snapped right in back there like it should have when we were up on time. So there's nothing I can do to improve on that. So we're in pretty good shape there. I think we need to button this thing back up, put some new gaskets on it, and uh, see if we can get this thing running again. So we're over here on the right side. We're gonna button this thing up. I've gone over all the surfaces here where this uh, side cover goes on. Then I've wiped it down with some uh, carbon choke cleaner here just to get it good and clean and dry. I've got my two uh, sleeves here, my alignment sleeves. They just stick in holes. There's one up here, and then there's one right here. And that's where the two long bolts go, the longer bolts. All right, so we'll go ahead and set our, uh, our gasket on here. We got a new gasket. It'll sit on those sleeves nice and pretty and stay in place. I've cleaned this uh, plate off nicely and got it all wiped down and ready to go. So we'll put it on, slip it over the, uh, the sleeves, but I think we can do it. <clears throat> we got it. So the two long bolts that went through those sleeves were Loctited. So I'm going to put a little Loctite on these and I am out of Loctite now. So we can't Loctite anything else. Boy, those are long too. We'll get those run down first. And then all the rest of them are a little shorter bolt. They're not maybe a, I don't know, eight millimeters shorter, something like that. 
we'll just kind of run them in. That's that for the, uh, the timing cover there and the crankshaft. Now we need to get the valve cover back on this. That's the other tricky part, getting the gasket all in place on that. So we'll take a look at that. So here's our valve cover gasket right here. And the way this goes on, it's got a lip all the way around it on both sides that lips over the, uh, the edge of the cylinder head here on the ceiling surface. And then we've got in here where the spark plug, these tubes for the spark plug holes, it's the same thing. It's got a lip that la lips over these and holds all of this in place. So the gasket has to go on first and it has to be put in place with the lips in place all the way around. So that's really the only tricky part to this. Uh, once this is on, putting the valve cover on should be real simple. It just sits right on top. But it is important to get the lip, the lips down all the way around in place. So I'll just start working around the, the head here. We've went all the way around here and worked this gasket into place. Uh, around on the, on the corners seems to be the, the corners in these uh, cam uh, cutouts here uh, seem to be the places where the gasket needs the most attention to get it to lay in place properly. So I believe I've got it in place all the way around now. So now we can see if we can set this valve cover in here. So let's see if we can slide it in here from the end without disturbing the gasket anywhere. Kind of hold it up. And then I'm going to look down through these tubes, spark plug tubes, line all that up. Oh yeah, it just dropped into place there without disturbing anything. I'm going to go around this again and just make sure the gasket's where it should be. That all looks good. I think we did it. So the top of the valve cover here has got little uh, washers with rubber centers in them that these cap bolts seal against. Make sure they're clean. We've got four long ones and two short ones. I'm pretty sure the short ones went over here over the timing gears. Yep. And then the other four go in the other four holes here. So I've kind of started with the two middle ones and then went to the ends and just snugged them down as I went a little at a time. Made a couple of rounds doing that. These bolts, they have a stop. They go down and hit the boss that, they, that they're screwed into. The end of the shaft is flat and it'll, it'll rest on that. So you just take it down all the way and you'll feel it when it hits that. And just give it a little, a little snug there on the, as it bottoms out. And that's it. The torque isn't going to be real critical on these since they're already set up to the depth that they're supposed to be. But you still don't want to go crazy on them. You know, they're not that big of a bolt. They just have a big head. And there, that one just hit the stop. I'll just give it a little snug there. I'm just going to go around this, look at all this uh, gasket all the way around one more time. Make sure it's all in place. Nothing squirted out or anything. Yeah, yeah, it looks real good. All right, that should not leak. I'm going to go ahead and put the spark plugs back in this. These plugs, I've, they've only got a couple of thousand miles on them since I put them in. So they look real good. Cylinders are all burning good. So that's a good thing. We'll get these back in. You always want to try to run those all the way to the bottom with your hand here. So you know you're not cross-threading them. That one hit the bottom. There she goes. Snug that one down. Okay. Put these coils back in, and it doesn't matter where they go. They're all the same. Put them wherever you want, whichever cylinder. Uh, the thing to do on these, I believe, 
is right here is where it at the top there's some ribs and they this is what seals in here and keeps the dirt and water from getting down in there i went ahead and put a little grease on there in those ribs that'll make it easier to get in and when you go to take it out it'll make it easier to get out as well and it'll also give you a little bit of uh, a better seal against water or anything getting down in there and the other thing on these is to make sure that the little spring inside of here that goes down and snaps on uh, onto the end of the spark plug you want to look at it and make sure it's nice and shiny and not brown or rusty looking but if you do see the rust that's or the rust or the brown that's the indication you're you're going to have a failure there on your coil so we'll put these back in with the connector pointing back towards the rider here those just push down all the way yep they're down all right we're going to see if we can get our uh, throttle body assembly back in here i've kind of positioned these clamps where they were so i'll be able to get to them to tighten them up these two the screws were pointing out that way slightly back a little bit something like that and then this one was kind of pointing back this way so hopefully that's about right these throats just plug right down in there push them all the way down and then tighten up our three clamps that's pretty much it on that other than plugging up the sensors and the uh, fuel line so try to get it positioned i did have some uh, took some pictures there of the valves the intake valves before i set this on and uh, there's quite a bit of uh, carbon built up on the back of them pretty gunky looking i think i'll run some fuel injector cleaner in the gas for a while on this see if we can clean those uh, those intake valves up a, a little bit they're, they're looking pretty rough okay i can feel it all the way down sitting on the ledge down there so that's in place i just need to tighten up my clamps now well i've got all my wires plugged up i know where everything goes now these go to the fuel tank and a couple of sensors right here on this breather i got my fuel line back on here on the fuel rail don't want to forget that we're going to put our breather our lower breather housing back on it's got a sensor here and a wire and a little uh, vacuum hose right here that goes on the bottom of that right here i'm going to make sure and get that on and get it plugged up the other thing on this lower housing is in the bottom of it there are rubber seals rubber rings that fit down in these grooves that seal the housing to this lip right here on the intake there's a raised uh, lip so that uh, that rubber seal in there that rubber o-ring seals down on that and seals this uh, seals the lower housing off to the to the throttle bodies we want to make sure those are in there and in good shape and they are and then uh, we've got a big hose that goes in the back here the uh, the uh, crankcase uh, ventilation hose sticking up here it plugs right onto that when we set this down so we'll go ahead and put this in place try to get that hose nipple started in this hose back here there it goes and sit that down in place so that's in place we got our rubber hose that goes on the bottom of this sensor i'm going to plug it up before i forget it 
onto that nipple and then we'll go ahead and plug in the sensor wire. These will go to the gas tank and then I got one sensor air charge sensor on top of the breather. And I believe that's all of our electrical right there. And then our fuel line. Get those back in place. We've also got a 10 mil or 8 millimeter headed cap screw here that goes in the bottom. Screws right into the top of the transmission there. We'll get it started. And we'll see if we can get these going. Just snug those down for now till I get everything started. Those don't need to be crazy tight, just good and snug is all they need. Um, they're not going to come out and they're a captured screw that even if they were to come loose, it can't get away. It can't get away and get in the motor or anything. That's probably tight enough. Folks, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. We did a little work here on the Mighty Tiger. Uh, spent the day in the garage here at the Ozarks Backroads World Headquarters. I'd rather been uh, riding out in the government woods, but... Uh... So we've checked our uh, valve clearances and our cam timing on the Tiger. Everything's looking pretty good. At, hopefully you've got a, a pretty good idea if you decide you want to do this. Uh, what you're going to be getting into. If you're interested in doing a throttle body synchronization, I did check that on here as well. I've got a video that I'll link in the description below. Uh, if you want to know how to do it, check out the video. It goes through the complete process on the Tiger here of uh, checking the throttle body synchronization and adjusting them. I hope you all had a great holiday season and I hope winter isn't too terrible where you're at. I invite you all to come back and see me. We'll go somewhere and do something else. Till I catch up with you again, you all take care of yourselves. We'll catch you next time.